Hi students, so I'm going to share some notes regarding extended writing, MUET format, um, the newest format, 2021. So we have opinion-based um, essay writing. Okay, uh, what is opinion-based uh, essay writing? So before we go deeper on that particular topic, uh, these are some questions that most of the students would ask. Is there any relevant format to follow? Should I state I agree or disagree with the statement? Must I have a complete uh, thesis statement? What about body paragraphs or content paragraphs? Should I include references? What should I avoid while writing? Will I be uh, penalized if I have written more words? Uh, you are supposed to write 250 words, not less than 250 words, but you can write more actually. What kind of examples should I provide? So these are practically some of the questions that you may ask yourself or you may ask your teachers or lecturers and whatnot. Um, so practically, uh, we have the format, not really a must format, but this is to help you to organize your thoughts, your ideas, and to have a very good flow of essay writing. Okay, the first one, as usual, introductory paragraph. Uh, you should have your opening grabber. You can introduce the readers to your topic. You can use catchy opening lines, rhetorical questions, anecdotes. Okay, what exactly rhetorical questions? Rhetorical questions are actually questions that you ask but you have to answer later on. So my advice would be do not ask silly rhetorical questions. For instance, do you know what is internet? Do you know um, what kind of education that students should have? Uh, you can ask a very intelligent question for, um, for rhetorical questions. Um, for instance, uh, have you ever wondered what happened if an orphan doesn't have um, good education uh, or it could be mm, what do you think of uh, Malaysia in 10 years uh, regarding uh, COVID-19? Would it be uh, more unemployment issues, so on and so forth. So rhetorical questions are kind of interesting, but do not ask silly questions because you are downgrading the examiners. Meanwhile, anecdotes uh, mean your own experience, your story in a very short sentences, short paragraph. Do not make it as a long essay telling the journey of your life. Anecdotes meaning you can insert uh, in suitable places based on your experience. Apart from anecdotes, uh, you can put simple definitions from your understanding. Try not to um, use can be defined as because you have to give references so on and so forth. Uh, descriptions uh, regarding the keywords and whatnot. Uh, and you must have a complete thesis statement. A sentence which consists of three big main ideas and remember your thesis statement should be parallel writing for instance i love jogging walking and reading so ing 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 uh, or perhaps you can write uh, in order to help um, students to really stress teachers should so when the word should uh, the next particular word uh, it's not supposed to have any additional letter at the end of the word. Should help the students, should provide, should um, look after. So meaning it will be singular word. Uh, important notes, uh, you will not be penalized if you write I agree or disagree with the statement given. So this is like opinion based. Uh, if you write, it's okay. If you uh, forgot to write, it's still okay. Meaning it is your opinion. Uh, options not to write or to write. Okay, um, try to avoid using research or study. This is uh, basically opinion based and you are writing on that particular moment whereby you have um, one hour perhaps to write this essay. So how can you get um, example from where actually the studies 
have been taken or have been done and whatnot. Uh, example studies have shown that people who sleep for eight hours. So where did you get the information? Which research paper are you referring to? Do you have the bibliography, the referencing? So if you don't have um, the particulars, so you just omit studies have shown because this is essay writing, not a research paper writing. Uh, what you can do uh, instead of using studies have shown based on the research. So you can say based on my readings, people who have enough sleep and rest would be, or uh, you can say in my opinion, people need to sleep at least, or you can say if we sleep at least eight hours, we would. Um, this is uh, regarding your opinion, not based on someone else's um, uh, research or study. You just write based on my readings, based on my understanding uh, from as far as I know. Okay, next. Um, try to avoid also um, can be defined as. Okay, stress can be defined as blah, blah, blah. You have to understand that definition can be taken from dictionary. Uh, where did you get the definition? So if you put stress can be defined as um, you have to state from which dictionary, which page, do you have the bibliography, so on and so forth. So what you can do, you can alter a little bit. Stress can have both uh, positive and negative effects towards us, especially students. So this is like your own sentence structures. Um, in my opinion, stress is a condition which gives or I believe that good stress is needed. Try to avoid um, particular things that I have mentioned earlier. Okay, next we have um, the format number two, body paragraph or content paragraph. Please write three paragraphs and the organization should be coherent. You have to have topic sentence, a state the main idea as written in TC statement often written as the first sentence of each paragraph. So topic sentence is actually your main idea. Remember the thesis statement, you have three big main ideas. So each paragraph should have one main idea and the paragraph should be focusing on the main idea stated in the topic sentence. Okay, um, concluding sentence at the end of the paragraph, uh, restate the main idea as written in topic sentence. So uh, after you have uh, completed your paragraph, you have to restate the main idea and you may use the word hands uh, so on and so forth write it as your final sentence for that paragraph because you are moving to the next um, paragraph uh, body paragraph also uh, supposed to have supporting details ideas can be in the forms of examples elaborations explanations descriptions etc um, very crucial for you to understand that you are actually supporting your topic sentence. Um, later, I'm going to show you examples of um, elaboration, explanation, so on and so forth. Must support the main idea discussed in this particular body or content. You, you should always be focusing on the topic sentence. Uh, use linkers, connectors, transition words, comparison words to create a smooth flow in reading process. Um, for your information, examiners are going to look at your coherence and the flow. So if your flow is very nicely done, examiners are not going to be hesitated to give you or to award you more marks. Concluding paragraph. Okay, uh, concluding paragraph will be the last paragraph, the final one, to bring to a closure of things that you have discussed earlier. Restate your thesis statement as Sentence which consists of three big main ideas referred to your introductory paragraph um, just now. And minimum four sentences. Um, if I were you, I wouldn't write my introductory and my concluding paragraph too long because I would like to be focusing on my three body paragraphs. So minimum four sentences, I mean as a conclusion, blah, 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 one sentence. And then you you write um, one more sentence, you restate your thesis statement and then you just um, close your paragraph. You may suggest, give opinions or reaffirm your stand if, if you would like to say I agree on the statement given. If not, you do not have to reaffirm your stand. Use to conclude to summarize as a conclusion and try not to use in a nutshell because in a nutshell um, there are a lot of students who love nutshell. I think uh, appropriately you should use something else. Finally, lastly, eventually to encapsulate. So I 
give you uh, more than enough examples for the concluding paragraph. Hmm. Um, let's try out one simple essay question. Uh, this is very simple question, but you have to give extra um, attention towards the keywords given. Give your opinion regarding the statement below. Online communication distorts physical relationship. Write your essay in not less than 250 words. As you can see, uh, online communication distorts physical relationship. We have um, three different parts. One is online communication, distort. So in this context, distorts mean negative and physical relationship. So what we can put under online communications umbrella? Okay, for online communication, we can put social media, online games, online relationship, online teaching or learning and so many other examples. Meanwhile, for these thoughts, you have to understand that these thoughts mean uh, means to change, to alter, and not the same, uh, not the same as we used to do or to have a uh, physical relationship. Um, I give you three contacts: the easiest one within family, um, friends, and relatives, and society. Um, when we take a look at the keywords, we have to understand that um, keywords are very important for us to decide uh, what kind of context should we be focusing on. For the first keyword or the keywords uh, online communication, so I give, I give here uh, examples, social media, online games, online relationship, online teaching. Okay, reasons to use um, social media to be updated with latest news or trends, online games to really stress. Uh, bear in mind, this is example, um, you can add on later on to get to know more people to keep up with learning technologies. So these are um, what we call brainstorming idea. So I see context number one, online communication. So these are the things that pop up to my mind. Um, next, we have um, the second context, physical relationship. So I have within family. So distortion is actually uh, online communication distort. So distortion is the negative impact, lack of showing appre uh, appreciation, love, respect, uh, problems in conveying message face to face, uh, could show rudeness while communicating physically. So these are the impacts or the after effect when online communication did something bad to the physical relationship. Physical relationship is actually when you communicate uh, with people uh, face to face and then if, if the mother and the daughter perhaps they have a very good bond, they, um, they have physical touch and whatnot. So those are physical relationship. Uh, examples, uh, why it is happening, uh, perhaps uh, we are too busy with gadgets uh, and then it limits our daily conversation. Both children and parents will be affected emotionally. Limited time spent on each other at home. Uh, older generation parents will be lonely. So these are actually example. Okay, the next one, uh, we have friends or relative. Uh, which one you prefer? And lack of time spent together to do good things. So what are the examples? Uh, problems in handling uh, problems face to face. Uh, relationship seems to be distant. Uh, examples, friends are no longer involved in healthy activities. So uh, previously, perhaps you go camping with your friends, you have a dinner together and why not now? Tend to be lonely, spend time alone, find excuses to involve in gatherings. Um, lastly, not having an honest conversation. Uh, because through online communication, people would not see or could not see your facial expression or your gestures, whether you are, ha you are honest, um, you are not telling the truth and whatnot. Okay, next. Um, society, um, lack of empathy towards other people and could lead to antisocial not really know ways to engage in real conversation with um, other people in the society, not involved in volunteering activities which um, should be done by a lot of teenagers nowadays but they are cooped up uh, at home playing games and whatnot. And then they tend to misjudge the society, why they cannot do this, why they cannot uh, do that, so on and so forth. 
and um, it is believed that they would have a um, hard time to work with other people in the future. Difficult to survive in real world uh, is another example. Okay, um, practically, what we have here, online communication, distorts physical relationship. The underlying meaning for the above question is by having online communication, our physical relationship with others will not be the same again. Okay, um, I will um, share with you uh, an example of introductory paragraph. Bear in mind, I'm going to do very simple, very easy for you to understand. It's just like um, for me to highlight what should be, uh, what you should have in the introductory paragraph itself. We might not really notice it, but I do believe that most of us prefer using online platform to communicate with family members and friends or even co-workers at the office. With uh, various applications to choose from, we somehow use them to convey our messages, feelings and emotions or simple notes with different um, ideograms and smileys known as emoji or emoticons towards people that we know. However, in my opinion, I believe that online communication distorts physical relationships among family members, friends, and society members. Okay, bear in mind, I did not put I agree or disagree, but it is okay for you if you write. However, in my point of view, I agree that online communication distort, distorts physical relationships among family members, friends, and society members. Okay, so the red one is actually your TC statement and body one would have family members, body two would have friends, body three would have society members. Why TC statement is very crucial? Okay, TC statement is actually uh, one of the way telling the examiners, okay, examiners, I'm doing three body paragraphs. So my first body is family members. My second body is friends. My third body is society members. If you just write in this essay, in this essay, I will explain the reason why. And then you full stop. The examiners will find... Um, would have a difficult time to decide what is actually... Um, you are talking about in the particular paragraph and then when you are giving hard time to the examiner um, your mark somehow would be jeopardized so be smart uh, straight away you tell okay i have three bodies i have three content paragraphs so uh, these are my point of view okay content paragraph uh, body one so i'm going to give only one content paragraph uh, and then um, you have to go through later on to see the connection and whatnot. One of the predominant features in building a good relationship among family members is physical touch or physical relationship. The bond between family members will become stronger if they help each other through thick and thin to make sure they live in a harmonious surrounding. So I'm putting here family members. So this particular paragraph is all about family members and how physical touch or physical relationship is crucial in the uh, relationship itself. However, most parents are busy to make ends meet and they tend to neglect their children's need to be touched, hugged or even patted on their shoulder if they have done something good to be praised about. Okay, take note here, I am focusing on parents and children. Um, if possible, you should have a solid focus so that the whole paragraph is revolving, uh, re revolving around your focus. Okay, um, we shall take a look at the topic sentence over here. So the topic sentence is uh, on the first... Uh, on the on the top of the paragraph so that examiner will straight away oh this is the topic sentence okay continue to the next page okay um let's continue therefore some parents chose the easiest way to convey their gratitude or appreciation through online applications like telegram or whatsapp instead of rushing to schools if their children received awards on something. So practically, I'm using Telegram or WhatsApp as the medium of online communication to show that parents are using the online communication to convey messages or uh, congratulations towards um, receiving awards or something. 
The lack of love showed by parents somehow affecting the children's emotional state. They might feel jealous looking at their friends' parents coming to school's event and spending time together. So this is the after effect. My um, sentences, my focus is still the same. Children and parents. This will lead to anger issues and if the suppressed emotions are not being treated well by the... Okay, we shall continue to the next page. So... As you can see in front of you, uh, this is one of the way um, cause and effect um, way of writing body paragraph. Okay, we continue. Uh, parents, the children might rebel or choose to be rude while talking to the, their parents as a result. Looking at this example, I believe children would love to receive hugs and kisses from their parents most of the time because this is physical touch not just during special occasions or events in life. Nevertheless, most working parents do not really have time to caress their children's forehead or embrace them once in a while. They would rather be immersed in chatting with friends through Facebook or uploading pictures on Instagram. So this one, I give another example. So meaning what actually children are looking forward or oh, receive hugs and kisses. Because of, uh, if you remember previously, I put them... Mm, receiving awards and whatnot. So instead of um, giving the children congratulation uh, notes, um, well done in your exam, so why not the parents just go to the event and then hug them and then show how proud the parents are. And uh, because of the parents are too busy and most of the time when they are at home, they could be um, busy chatting online. Okay, continue to the next page. Um, how happy their family is to make things worse, children will channel their feelings towards online games to connect with strangers who can talk to them about anything. They would care less about their parents, so they chose to spend time alone in their room. Okay, so when the um, parents are busy, and at home also they are busy, so children are going to channel their feelings towards online games. Could be online chatting. So practically they would be engaging with someone else so they will connect themselves with strangers and talk to them while playing games um, since they are having good time talking to other people not not parents um, consequently they would be scolded for spending too much time on gadgets instead of doing work or doing homework which by far is not totally their fault at the first place so one incident will cause another incident. So practically my style of writing is actually talking about one cause will be uh, affecting the children and what will happen to the children because of the parents are neglecting the physical touch. Um, and bear in mind, uh, I'm not referring to any psychology article and whatnot. This is based on my readings. So I put everything uh, by using my own sentences. So lastly, I put uh, the topic, not the topic sentence, but the concluding sentence, the last one. Thus, I believe that online communication has distorted physical relationship among family members, especially between young children and working parents. Remember, I will restate the topic sentence as my concluding sentence. So the question is, can I repeat the exact sentence from my topic sentence? That one is up to you. If you feel like you would like to copy, you just say thus, and then you take your topic sentence, you just put on um, your, as your last statement. And why is it necessary? Why is it very important for you to conclude the whole paragraph? Remember, the second paragraph will not be the same as the first paragraph. Okay, so practically, I have completed my first paragraph as the body. And uh, I'm going to show you the sample of concluding paragraph only. Because if I were to write the whole essay, it will take forever for you to understand. Um, as a conclusion, effective communication can be in any forms as long as the message is clear and understandable. Uh, nonetheless, physical relationship among family members, friends and society members. So remember this, this is my thesis statement. Can be affected if we are too engrossed in online communication in our daily life. For that reason, I believe that online communication distorts physical relationships as well as affecting someone's emotional state. So the green one is actually I'm emphasizing 
I'm writing this essay based on the particular statement given. Okay, so um, this statement should be stated and make it very clear that you are actually focusing on the statement given. So concluding paragraph um, should be written uh, short and sweet. Do not um, repeat whatever that you have written in body one, body two, body three. Uh, you can suggest, you can suggest, you can give your other opinions, but do not write too long for this particular concluding paragraph. More marks will be awarded for your body one, body two, body three instead of concluding uh, paragraph. So uh, by now, I hope that you would understand argumentative essay and opinion-based essay are not that different, but only with one phrase, I agree or I disagree. So if you like to see my uh, argumentative uh, format, you can go to my channel and then browse to argumentative essay. And then you can also go to compare and contrast essay. Practically, the format would be five paragraph essay, but only in the essay itself, you are going to find it uh, somehow it has similarities. Uh, they have similarities and they do have uh, differences. So um, have a good day. Bye for now.